Hello and welcome back to the channel. I have had a right nightmare trying to record this episode. I've already done it twice, just could not get the sound to work. So I'm yapping away, explaining, go back to edit it, nothing, no, no sound whatsoever. So hopefully, third time lucky, you can hear me now. Anyway, let's get on with this. Remember the last episode I did we talked about collision detection and I did this little example on the screen if you touch a wall we bounce back up and the object of the game was to get to the blue square which I'm absolutely useless at well I thought it would be fun to add something midway as another collision and I wanted to show you today how we can move something else another character being controlled by the spectrum back and forth like I'm doing here with the A but we'll use perhaps the capital M for monster perhaps we'll use a capital M and we'll move that halfway in our little maze there as a bit of an obstruction for us to get past to get to that blue square so let me show you how to do that right so what I've done is I've come away from our main program for the moment and creating a new program separate away from that one just so I can explain how to move something on the screen so if I just push run I'll show you what happens we've got that M darting across the screen okay bouncing from one position to the other line 10 we've got a equals 1 let B equal 1 line 11 a1 equals a 15 a equals a plus b line 20 if a equals 1 before I go any further look at line 50 print at 10 a capital M so on the vertical we've got um, 10 and the a which is our column is where M is going to sit and I'm changing the a position at lines 20 and 30 because it's bouncing between both both of those numbers so it starts so if it gets to 1 it's then got to go B equals B plus 1 if it gets to 20 then it minuses that B so it goes B equals B minus 1 see what I see it's creating like a bit of a loop so it's just bouncing from 1 to 20 all the time line 60 go to 15 goes right back where it says a equals a plus b again if you look at print our print statement a there's a look after the 10 on a horizontal and it's plusing the b and that's what's causing it to move I hope I've explained that okay because <laughs> I've recorded this three times like I said before but that's, that is basically how I've done that. If you look at line 40, like I did with the in keys to stop it leaving a trail, I've created two variables, A1 and A. And that's line 11. So they equal the same. And it's just so it stops leaving a trail. Because if it's not in there, it's just going to leave a trail, yeah? Now, didn't necessarily have to do that. We could have just put a space. Because it's only going in one direction, it's not going upwards. We could have just put a space either side of the M. And it would do exactly the same thing. The reason why I'm putting line 40 in is because when I put it back into our little maze, I don't want it taking the wall away. Because obviously there's a space either side of the M house, it'll take the wall away. So that's why I've um, put line 40 in there, to prevent that from happening. And later on in the program, I am planning on moving that M vertically as well. So I'll add to that eventually. But for now, I'm just going to concentrate on a horizontal movement from one point to the other and then returning again. All right. So let's now incorporate all of that into our other program. 
Right, so now I've put it in to our program. And I've done it at, starting from line 600, 599, I've put a REM statement there, like monster movement. So from my, I know now from that REM statement all the way down to where it says 800 stop is basically to do with our M moving. There are variables at the beginning of the program, or near the beginning, I should say. 600, I've put some variables there, just to just go back there a minute before I go any further. I haven't used the same letters as I did in the previous example I just showed you of, of it moving. I've had to use C and D because I've already got a B and I think there's already an A actually already in the main program so I didn't want any confusion so I'm using C and D okay C is our horizontal on print at 13 C capital M line 630 there line 100 that's where I've put the variables look so C which was our horizontal I've told it to start at position 10 D I've asked it to equal 1 and then I've put the C1 equals C at line 106 so I've started that one at the top later on as these episodes go on I am going to rearrange all these variables and I'm going to organize it a bit better but for now just for this video they're going to sit there line 165 there is my movement c equals c plus d so i've literally slapped it bang in the middle right after the controls of the um um the controls of us moving character a okay right straightforward enough really then 650 it goes back right to the beginning of the loop and then just repeats it 700 um, you'll see I've got a statement say in there print at 10-10 you are dead and then a little loop plays with some with a tune at the bottom now the reason why I've done that is because I've added a collision as well go back up and find that for you there we go line 175 if screen strings let's bring it down let's bring it down so you can see it better if screen strings y x again that's our coordinations of our character a the one that we are moving if it equals m then it will then go to 700 and that's 700 is where I just said where it says you are dead and it it does a, a loop on line 710 on the end of a beep just to create a bit of a sound when it's finished and 800 I've just told the program to stop so this is what we've ended up with now I've got an M see how it's slowed down as well because obviously the programs getting longer this is one of the problems with basic the more and more you put in there the slower and slower it's going to get i'm going to use the joypad i'm going to move the a down got to remember as well that these walls will still make me bounce off if i touch them so can i get past the monster to get through the car of course i can <laughs> but if i hit it you are dead so the collision is working still working on the walls as well so there you go it just adds something else to the program there So eventually we could um, add a score system. I could put a life counter in there so we lose a life every time we hit something. You know, it's just a case of now just doing what we like to make it in, into a more um, enjoyable little game. Whoops. <laughs>
But yes, that's basically it. So we've created a little program. We've got the game scene starting at line 45. We've got our variable starting at 100. Like I say, I will tidy that up in another episode. We then got our controls from 120 down to 160. So if we push a button, the um, character A moves, or if we use the joystick, it moves. And then we've got our collision detection from 170 down to 180, where we've got our collision um, coordinates for the blue box. And, and then at the end there, we've got the monster movement, the capital M, moving back and forth. And if we hit it, it just goes to stop. Simple little program. Like I said before, in the last program, we got a blueprint there now to make to make a game. You know, we could say put a score system in, a life counter, maybe another level. So when you've completed that level, maybe the sc screen changes, the platforms move differently. You know, we can do whatever we like now. So there you go. So like I say, on the next program, what I might do is. Sh organize start to organize stuff a bit better introduce a score system a life counter and then we're, we're near enough made a small little game so there you go that's it for this episode hope you've enjoyed it and uh i'll see you on the next one thank you very much for watching <laughs>